Hey everyone, Austin here again with another Let's Play video. Today we're going to be playing Roading Track Presents The Need for Speed. And this is a 1994 racing game by Electronic Arts in conjunction with Roading Track Magazine, a very, very long running uh, car enthusiast magazine. And uh, this game is pretty notable for a few different reasons. For one, this is one of the first fully texture mapped polygonal racing games on a console that I can think of. Uh, two, it's got some really excellent physics that really stand the test of time, uh, some really tight controls, and a fantastic sense of speed. Um, while the visuals are going to look dated and the frame rate isn't the best compared to, you know, what we're used to today, overall the game has actually aged quite nicely. And, you know, I played this game uh, many, many years ago. I've actually played it on and off over the last 20 years. You know, I've got my first 3DO in the late 90s. And um, I, I never really warmed up to this game. I've tried it over and over and over again. But recently I gave it another go, I really just buckled down and, and stuck with it and, and I put it on the higher difficulty mode that forces you to change gears and shift manually, which gives you faster speed. Um, it really just clicked and I was like, man, this game is pretty awesome. Uh, so I'm really glad to be able to show this one off for this Let's Play. This is going to be a relatively casual Let's Play. I'm, I'm by no means an expert at this game, uh, but we are going to be playing on the professional difficulty mode, which actually gives us an extra course um, or a an extra section of each of the three courses in the Time game. To warm in the bench. So this guy right here is, his name is the X-Man, and he likes to taunt you throughout the game. Uh, this is one of the points of contention with this game, this guy talking to your face. If you lose, he berates you like like nothing else, and it's kind of like a, a slap to the face when he comes on the screen a lot of the time. Sometimes he'll congratulate you, you know, if you win and things like that, but if you don't win, uh, he'll kick you when you're down, and uh, fortunately you can disable him in the, uh, the main menu here. So let's go ahead and just hit the A button. Uh, and go to the title screen and get through this and then we'll go to this main menu here uh, actually before I start explaining things here what I'm gonna do is give a big shout out to my current patreon backers as always so they're gonna flash by the screen thank you guys for your continued support we actually got a new backer this week Casey Billings so Casey if you're watching this thank you so much for your support it's much appreciated just remember guys if anyone's interested in supporting the show through patreon as little as a dollar a month will get you my videos a week early and ad free and uh, and anything else I do will, will come early as well uh, also going to flash by the recent live stream Super Chatters. Thank you guys for your continued support as well. And uh, yeah, so let's get on with this. So you've got a variety of different options here on the main menu here. And this is a really, really cluttered main menu system. Uh, so let's go ahead and actually hit start just so I can sort of explain things. So there's no on-screen prompts telling you what buttons to push. It doesn't say press A or press B or press C. Uh, you have to use the shoulder keys to switch your options. And we're going to actually do this, uh, this city area first. Uh, that's basically the first. And then you've got the coastal, which is technically the second. And then you've got alpine, which is the third. Uh, so it starts off uh, mostly straightaways. And then you get more twists and turns in the second course. And then lots and lots of twists and turns and sharp turns on the third course. And uh, you've got uh, yourself up here. You can press the R button up here and uh, L button to switch uh, your cars. We're going to actually use the, uh, the Acura NSX. It's what I like to play as. And if you go to your opponent here uh, and use the shoulder keys, uh, you can switch his vehicle as well. We'll give him a, uh, let's see, uh, I don't know. Something that's gonna stand out a little bit. Uh, give him the old, the old Ferrari there. Uh, you can also click him and, um, oops, I did the wrong thing. This is what I don't like about this menu. You, you press the lives. wrong button, you take this baby and you go to a full motion video. Well, for the so here we go, and we're gonna go ahead and just skip through that again. Uh, also, if you go to your car selection up top and press a button, it'll actually give you uh, some information on the cars. Uh, it'll also give you, so if we hit, uh, say, A right here, it should fire up a full motion video of, uh, of the car. So, you know, this game was probably pretty interesting for people that were car enthusiasts back in the day. I mean, there, this, was game, this game was kind of like the first of its kind, really, uh, in terms of, you know, the then-current, you know, games on the then-current modern CD text. You, you had games like the Test Drive series prior to this, which were very similar, 
But now you got full motion video, uh, you've got loads and loads of information, and uh, I'm, I'm sure for car enthusiasts back in 1994, this uh, it was it was a bit of a wet dream. Um, Alright, so we're going to go ahead and just skip through that again, go back to the main menu so I can keep explaining what's going on here. And, uh, let's go ahead and hit the, uh, the back button. Well, I should say the, uh, X key. And, uh, so yeah, actually you can, um, use the shoulder keys, uh, to remove the guy, uh, the X-Man, and you can basically just play by yourself instead of having an opponent. Normally this game is head-to-head -head, and that's how we're going to be playing because I think that's it's the most interesting for a Let's Play that way. Um, but if you're just trying to get your best times and whatnot, you can play the uh, the time trial mode, which is really nice. So let's go ahead and switch him back to his car. I'm going to switch me back to my car. And we'll peruse the main options menu real quick and then uh, we'll just get into the race. So the, uh, the game's probably going to take us about, I'd say, 40 to 50 minutes to get through. The uh, last couple of courses in particular are like 5 to 10 minutes long uh, each. So I think it's probably going to take us a little under an hour to get through this. Um, so yeah, you've got uh, various audio. You can, you can select. You can do just music only. You can do sound effects. When you're in the race, there is no in-game music. So it's one of the things that's kind of interesting about this game. I didn't like that there was no music back in the day, but now it actually kind of like gets me into the experience more. I just hear the engines revving, the, the stick shift uh, changing, um, uh, the police sirens, and uh, you know everything passing me by as I drive. So uh, you can change your audio mode. Uh, opponent video is the X-Men. So I turn this off and that's why he's got a, a bit of duct tape on his mouth. Uh, on the very beginning. you got automatic brake system and traction control and stuff like that. So depending on your, your preferences, you can change that. And you've got controller options as well. And you've got uh, high scores in this game. There is a scoring system, although it's not on the screen as you're playing. Basically, the better you drive, uh, the less crashes you get into and things like that, the more points you're going to get. Um, so skill level also, you got to use the shoulder keys to change these, by the way, which is really confusing. If you press L, uh, left or right, it you get that skid sound. So the game defaults to novice auto shift. I highly recommend playing this game on pro because you'll get all the extra courses that you don't get on novice. Now, I haven't actually played it on intermediate. I basically went from novice, was like, eh, this game's fun, to pro. To being like, oh, this game is awesome, and uh, I highly recommend playing this game on Pro with manual ship. Uh, the other thing about Pro is uh, the top speed feels like it's higher. Um, I don't know if that's actually the case, um, but you know, manual ship does usually have a, a higher top speed overall, and that could be why. Um, but also, you're going to have more traffic on the road, and that makes things a lot more interesting. If you play a novice here, there is a whole lot less uh, activity going on on the roads, and so the game could actually be kind of boring if you play it on novice. Uh, so I do recommend playing this on pro. And uh, so let's go ahead and hit start. And let me go back into the main options just to make sure. Yeah, so you have to hit start. If you press uh, back, uh, it won't actually save your options. So it, it it's so confusing. But uh, once you get the hang of it, it's it's not really a big deal. So we got everything set up. Let's go ahead and just uh, hit the ignition and race. So, you know, you've got three main courses in the game. Each has three sections. Um, now, if you play a novice, each only has two sections. And so if you're playing this game on novice and not experimenting on pro mode, you're missing out on uh, three courses in the game. And I'd say probably the best courses in the game because the third course of each area is is probably the most interesting. Um, so if you hit the, uh, the start button here, you've got a map uh, that you could bring up. You can go to game options and, uh, you know, you could change some things here as well. So let's get out of there. And you can go to continue. Um, and uh, what we're gonna do is, since we're in pro mode, we have to shift up and down. You use the shoulder keys to shift up and down. So you can just sit here and shift. So the timer in the top isn't gonna start until I start driving. My opponent's not gonna start until I start driving as well. So we could just sit here forever if we want. Now we're actually in reverse right now, so and that's neutral in the middle. So we need to go up. And then uh, hit the A button, and let's go. So let's see how well we can do here. 
and I shifted up twice by accident. So this will this will be an interesting uh, let's play. I was actually doing a practice run of this game, thinking like, man, what am I gonna say during this playthrough? Um, you know, it's all about driving. It's all about staying off the uh, the walls. It's all about not crashing into opponents. Um, but the nice thing about this game is when it comes to uh, racing against your opponent, pretty much anything goes. You know, you can you can veer off the track like that, just like I did to get around uh, your opponent or or traffic. You can you can slam into your opponent if you want, as, assuming you don't slam too hard and wreck your vehicle. Um, you can just weave in between traffic. You can drive on the wrong side of the road. Uh, but remember, there is a, a big risk of doing that. If you slam into a car, uh, you'll lose a car. Uh, you basically have, I think you start off with five cars or so, and they, they basically act as your lives. And if you run out of lives before uh, you end the race, then it's obviously game over. You'll have to do the, oops, just like that. And we just ran into a, a, a cop car, which uh, isn't exactly good. And there's the smoke. The, the crashes in this game were really awesome, actually. Uh, really, really awesome. So unfortunately, the opponent uh, just got past us, and he's probably going to end up winning because of that crash, but we'll see what happens here. Now, you can play in third-person mode. I don't really recommend it. I find that the steering just doesn't feel very good in third-person. Um, but it is an option. Uh, whenever you wreck, though, or you bump into something really hard, it'll go into third person, which is actually kind of nice because, um, you know, it gives you a, a good overhead view of everything that's that's happening around you. Say if there's, you know, extra oncoming traffic um, or, uh, you know, if you need to sort of like do a 180 uh, with the reverse function, it's a lot easier to do that in third person than it is in fir first person. So... Uh, but it is entirely possible to play the whole game in third person. I just don't recommend it for this specific version of the game. Now, if you're playing like the PlayStation or Saturn versions of the game, it, that's different. Um, so this game did come out on other systems, uh, PlayStation, Saturn, and PC. Um, but they're, uh, the PlayStation and Saturn ones in particular, and I'm not sure about the PC one, are arcade-style racing games. Uh, there's very little to no traffic in those games. The speed is, is higher. The controls are much more twitchy. Um, and uh, so I, I actually, if you're into more of like the, you know, the traditional driving, driving games, not racing games, driving games, kind of like test drive and whatnot. Uh, and if you prefer the more realistic handling and things like that, um, I highly recommend playing this version of the Need for Speed over the other ones. Now, I do have the PlayStation version of the game, so hopefully we can do a Let's Play on that someday. Uh, that could be interesting, and I could talk about, you know, the, the differences. Uh, one other neat feature in this game is the cops actually start to chase you, and the cop is actually behind me, and the cops are actually really aggressive on professional mode. They'll actually slam into you, they'll hit you from the rear, and so you really want to make sure that, you know, you're up to speed, you're outpacing them, uh, if the cops catch you, they, uh, they'll give you a ticket, and a couple of tickets, and it's they arrest you. And once you get arrested, it's pretty much game over. So let's not get arrested. Shift down, too. We're going to be actually shifting up and down quite a lot on later courses in the game. On this course, you know, you can stay in fourth and fifth gear most of the time and get away with it. And there's my opponent car. Basically, when he hits the checkpoint, he just pulls over to the side. And it's actually another neat feature in this game, too, is, you know, there's a lot of, there are a lot of realistic uh, factors uh, in this game. You know, um, if you get into a wreck, traffic will actually slow down and they'll try to like slowly drive out of the way. Kind of like if you got into a wreck on a real road uh, in real life, uh, your opponent, if you crash early, sometimes your opponent will just pull off, uh, you know, to, to let you catch up. So there's, there's almost like this human element, uh, in this game, which, uh, you know, isn't often captured in a lot of these types of racing games, uh, or driving games. You'll see, uh, you'll see just, uh, standard traffic, you know, occasionally pull off to the side of the road to park, like if they're having an emergency or something like that. You know, it's, it's very, uh, very realistic, and it's, it's very, uh, very cool. Very, very cool. 
It's it's great to see all the attention to detail that was put into this game. Because, you know, I, like I said at one point in time, I didn't really give this game a whole lot of credit. But the more I've been playing it, the more I've been seeing and catching those little details. And uh, it's, it's just really neat to see. Alright, so let's use the brakes, Austin. Alright, let's shift down. And we're gonna shift down again. And again, not again. You can see the roads are getting a little more windy here. But this is nothing compared to the uh, the third course on the Alpine track in particular. So that beeping sound is your radar. It basically senses uh, where police uh, the police are. Where the cop cars are. And when you hear their sirens go off, they start chasing you. But if you're at a really high speed, you just pass them by. You don't really have to... You don't really have to worry about them. Alright, so shift down to get back up to speed quickly. The great thing about playing on Professional is you've got the, the full manual trans transmission. Uh, which means that you can really get back up to speed pretty quickly with uh, some... some uh, some good gear changing. You know, I actually kind of enjoy playing this in manual. A lot of my racing games I just play in automatic, but this one in particular I really enjoy in manual. It kind of takes me back to uh, my old Mustang, uh, my Mustang GT in particular. Uh, in my older Mustang LX, I had, uh, I've had two Mustangs and they were both stick shift. So I drove stick shift for uh, a very long time. And uh, so this kind of takes me back to, you know, shifting up and down as quickly as I can when I'm in a uh, kind of a racing mood. Or just uh, go really, really fast, really, really fast kind of mood. My current car, though, is an automatic transmission. I drive a Mazda 6 these days. Uh, nothing nothing crazy. I'm starting to feel a little bit like an old man with the, the automatic transmission, but... Uh, the auto transmission actually works really well in my area. I work, I, I live in an area where it's just very busy. You know, we're a highly populated area. It's constantly stop and go. So a stick shift's not even all that great in my area personally. But I will say when you're on the highway and in, you know, uh, it, having a stick shift is actually quite nice. And this almost kind of, playing this game almost kind of takes me back to driving, uh, you know, having cars with stick shifts in them. So this is definitely a game where you have to use your brakes and we're going to be doing that a whole lot more often as uh, the game progresses here. Actually, we're going to go ahead and downshift again. And that's the checkpoint. Alright, so we lost twice there. Not a big deal. You, you just keep playing. Even if you lose, you just keep playing. If you win all three, you'll get a full motion video saying like, Oh, first place, and you'll see some cars like drifting and stuff like that. And it's kind of neat, but yeah, um, you know, don't feel too bad if you lose in this game to your opponent. Um, but there are a lot of a lot of factors, uh, a lot of sort of like randomized factors in this game. I mean, your opponent will smash in the traffic, and you'll just you'll just fly right past him. So just because like you're playing on the hardest difficulty mode doesn't mean your opponent is gonna like have rubber band AI like in Sega arcade racers and things like that. Uh, like I said, this game always feels like it has a little bit of a human element to it, even though you're not playing against a human. It's really cool. You know, again, all the attention to detail that was put into, uh, you know, this driving experience. So, there are actually a bunch of cheat codes in this game. Probably the most notable one I found is uh, removing the uh, the dashboard HUD. Uh, so, you notice that, you know, it, you know, the main game takes place from a first-person perspective. You can, you can obviously... Um, you know, adjust that, play it in third person. Again, I don't recommend it. Uh, the game just feels so much better, so much more responsive in first person. Um, but the screen size is still relatively small. You're not even getting half the screen. Um, you know, I should say your uh, your windshield, your viewpoint isn't even taking up, you know, half the screen real estate. Um, but using the a code will actually give you about three quarters of the screen. It'll remove the um, the the dashboard completely, and um, 
and basically the the top three quarters of the screen will just be all gameplay. So that's a that's another way uh, to play the game. So if you check this game out, or if you have a copy of the game and you didn't know that, go to Game Facts or Game FAQs, and uh, there's a whole section with all the cheats that you can do in this game. There's some really interesting stuff that you can enable, but that's probably the most noteworthy, in, in my opinion, is uh, removing the, uh, you know, the in-car view, basically. You'll still play in first person, but you'll get a whole lot more uh, screen viewing space, which is kind of nice. But uh, we're not playing like that. I do actually like playing with the, uh, you know, the in-car view. It just, you know, kind of gets me into, uh, you know, the experience a little bit more. So we got the car, uh, cop car on me again. Let's see if we can... Oh, that's not good. Great. We're gonna get another ticket. Yeah, we have to stop now. Well, this is a pretty horrible showing so far. I've already, uh, crashed multiple times. But that's okay. Like I said, this is going to be more of a casual uh, let's play, where I, you know, a lot of my let's plays, I try to play, I try to play decently for the most part. I try to show off, you know, you know, good techniques and things like that, smart techniques. Uh, so, you know, you folks out there that might not be uh, as familiar with some of these games can come out of the video with some new strategies and things like that. Um, and and so you can see some decent play. I, I know a lot of you guys like seeing you know, people wreck and things like that and play poorly because it can be entertaining for some of you. But me, I like I like to show off decent play and to show people that games are not nearly as hard as uh, a lot of people make them out to be. It's just a lot of discipline and, and knowing the games and knowing strategies and things like that and applying said strategies and discipline and whatnot. Um, but a game like this, it, you know, eh. I don't have to get super technical with it. I can just sort of uh, play it casually, and hopefully you guys can still enjoy the video uh, for what it is. But we'll see. We've got uh, we basically have two more courses, each with uh, three sections. So we still have a little ways to go on this playthrough. Ooh, that was actually a good uh, correction there. Normally, I'll stop completely and have to go to first gear again, but uh, I was able to pick back up pretty quickly. So hopefully, we can do better on the the other courses. We'll see what happens. Oh, I thought I could... I was... Come on. I thought I was going to weave in between those. Normally, that works, and uh, so that was just some bad judgment on my part. So one thing I'm doing wrong here is I'm not braking far enough in advance, and uh, I think that's really, uh... Wow! I slammed into him. That's awful. I wonder if he's gonna uh, be right up on my rear. Looks like the cop just disappeared. That's odd. Yeah, one other reason you really want to play this on professional is because I find that you get the most variety in the uh, the scenery if you get to access all the courses. Um, so the first two courses on each route um, are usually, you know, kind of samey, but it's the third courses that I find, like, really start to mix things up. And there's the cops still coming up behind me. But this is the finish line, so we don't have anything to worry about. I think if we got pulled over one more time, we might have gotten a game over. Yeah, so that total route took us 12 minutes. And you can also play some highlights, which is pretty cool. And so this should take us back to the main menu. Perhaps after watching a uh, credit scroll. Nope, not gonna give us the credit scroll. All right, 
So let's go ahead and actually, uh, I'm gonna stick with the NSX, but we'll go ahead and uh, switch up our opponent. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and switch up the track as well. We're gonna go to the coastal route. And let's just jump into that. So it's actually kind of interesting to see like where Need for Speed got its start. I mean, this was the very first game in the series, and this is a series that is still going today. Uh, granted, it's quite different today than what it was when it, you know, when it when it began. But uh, it's really interesting to just see how far the series has come. Um, it's also interesting to just see that it started on the 3DO. Um, you know. It's, very cool to see that certain developers and certain franchises even got their start on this sort of ill-fated platform that uh, not many people talk about these days. And uh, some of these games that got their start on the 3DO are still pretty awesome. This and Road Rash in particular are uh, really good examples of sort of long-running franchises. Not that Road Rash is really still going these days. Um, I know a lot of people would like to see a reboot. But uh, it did have a lot of uh, follow-ups on subsequent consoles uh, outside of the 3DO. Actually, I probably shouldn't say a lot. Now that I think about Road Rash, because there was uh, Road Rash 3D. All right, maybe there weren't a lot of, uh, you know, uh, subsequent conversions or follow-ups to that game. And actually, Road Rash, I'm an idiot, didn't even get it started in the 3DO. But it had probably one of the best versions on the 3DO because it actually got its start on the, the Genesis and Mega Drive. My brain is obviously not working today, so I apologize for that, guys. But my driving is working a little bit better right now, and that's nice. So we're just kind of like cutting past these guys. That guy was about to pull over. So, you really gotta watch out for the traffic in this game. Sometimes it's like they have a mind of their own, but um, you've got to remember, they're not out there to screw you like they are in other racing games. So, you know, they're not just going to intentionally get in your way. And they're just trying to merge, you know, kind of like any normal good, uh, good driver would. So, you know, you don't really have a ton of risk with the, uh, oops, with the traffic in this game. Uh, particularly, I should say... You don't have uh, a ton of risk with uh, traffic that's on your side of the road. Now, if you're driving on the opposite side of the road, then, you know, obviously there's a lot of risk there because you've got to deal with oncoming traffic. They won't usually try to get out of your way, or, or if they do, it's usually too late because you're going, you're going really fast in this game. Um, I'm going to downshift just a little bit. Upshift again. One of the only, one of the few issues I have with this game, this could just be like my current condition at the moment. Um, you know, I've been having health issues these last few weeks. My eyesight as a result is uh, having some trouble at the moment. And I think it's, I think it's a combination of my eyesight, but it's also a combination of the low resolution, um, basically 320 by 240. Um, it feels like uh, oncoming traffic will just like appear out of nowhere. Um, certain car types, anyway, particularly like the white ones, it feels like they just kind of blend in with the scenery, and uh, it's very hard for me to uh, to notice them until they're right in my face. And here's a police car. Yeah, we're doing much better uh, this time. Oops. I didn't mean to downshift like that. But yeah, for anyone else out there that's watching, that's played this game, let me know if you have similar problems with the game. Uh, you know, like, sort of oncoming traffic just appearing out of nowhere. I feel like it probably wouldn't be as big of an issue if the frame rate was higher. So if it was like 60 frames a second, or even a solid 30. Because uh, I don't even think this game runs at 30 frames a second. It's probably like the low 20s. And, uh, you know, if that. And 
And uh, yeah, I wonder if I would be able to see those cars pop in a little bit better uh, if the frame rate was a lot smoother. Yeah, so the NSX is actually uh, one reason I'm driving it. It's a car I've always liked. Uh, you know, it's just kind of a very unique looking vehicle. And uh, here, in, here in my area, uh, the Northern Virginia, Washington DC area, I've uh, I've seen actually quite a few over the years. Uh, it was always one of those cars I thought was pretty neat. We actually have a. Uh, an Acura and Honda dealership up the up the street from my house and you know back in the day when I was still in high school they would actually get a few of these in occasionally you know like used people would trade them in and uh, so you know I've got to see them in person and walk up to them and and touch them and it's they're, they're pretty cool pretty cool cars I'm not really a car aficionado but there are some vehicles that I, I do kind of have a soft spot for and uh, the NSX is is one of those So now you'll notice that you can go off onto the shoulder, but you can only go so far. Uh, you'll basically just hit like an invisible wall. That's one of the other issues with this game that kind of like takes you out of the... Kind of kind of like takes you out of the zone. Like, because the game is, is very realistic when it comes to the driving and and, uh, and the sense of speed and stuff like that. How, how traffic, uh, you know, acts on the road, how they operate. But then you just run into an invisible wall when you try to go too far off the shoulder. Uh, and I think that's kind of a shame, but um, it's not really a big deal. Because when you're playing the game normally, you're you're not trying to drive on the shoulder. If you go too far on the shoulder, you start slowing down a little bit. And you know when you're playing this game, you want to try to be as fast as you can to defeat your opponent. There's another cop. There's a lot of cops on this road. Oh, that's not good. That was good shifting down the first gear, though. I went right to first gear, and now we're actually getting right back up to speed. So that's the great thing about the uh, the stick shift. When you get good at stick, uh, you know, shifting with the stick, uh, you can recover much, much faster than you can with an automatic transmission. Now one thing I'm doing is when I'm shifting, I'm also letting go of my gas when I shift. Um, just very briefly, just like I would on a real car. You know, you don't want to be giving it gas when you're shifting. And same when you're shifting down. And it kind of allows you to shift um, and, and have the, uh, the gears engage uh, a little bit faster. Now, I'm sure there are some car aficionados out there that can explain it a lot better than me. Uh, because, again, I don't I don't race. I'm not a car aficionado. I don't really follow the stuff. I've just driven stick shift for a while. Uh, and those are some, you know, one of the things I've, I've picked up. And that was bad. I downshifted when uh, my RPMs were way too high. You know, I really like the the visuals in this game too. Uh, I really feel like they did a, a really solid job of kind of like recreating, um, you know, sort of like real world like you know scenery. You know, and the hills are very natural. The way like the hills are implemented in this game. You know, you really feel like, you know, you're kind of driving on a road. And I really like it when games can... Um, can be engrossing like that. Your cars in this game also feel like... They've got this heft to them, you know, they've got this weight. And cars are heavy in real life, you know. You drive a car, uh, it's heavy, you feel it. You feel that weight, and you feel that weight in this game. There are a lot of racing games, even simulation racing games, where you don't really feel that weight as you're driving, but in this game, you really do.
Alright, so this is our third section to the coastal course. And let's see how we can do here. See, here's our third person view as well. It just feels super, super awkward. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, go back to first person. You basically use the C button to do that. That was close. Ooh, I slid out. All right, we have to reverse. Oh, that's not good. We're probably gonna end up losing this race now. So if you get stuck on a rail like that, you've got to go into reverse if you want to get out of that. So you get a downshift past neutral into reverse. Ninety degree turn here. So you, hit, so you can see how some of the turns are becoming much more sharp. So in the third course, uh, it pretty much requires you to break a lot and take things relatively slow. Now just because you're slowing down doesn't mean like things really feel slow. So it'll be you and traffic and your opponent all taking the turn slow, just like in real life. And you're trying to weave in and out of the traffic, you know, around these corners. You're trying to still pass your opponent even though you know, you've got lots of tight turns and things like that. It's, it's, it's really an interesting dynamic. It's kind of hard to sort of convey without actually playing the game. I really like this uh, section of the track, too, with the forest. And uh, basically, you know, you've got shadows on the roads and things like that. Your, um, the inside of your car also dims, too, which is a nice little touch. You know, as the trees block the sunlight from above. You know, this game might not seem like much to a lot of you guys out there today, but remember, this is 1994. Uh, the 3DO was pretty impressive stuff when it came out. This was before the Saturn and PlayStation. Uh, for a lot of us, uh, you know, a lot of us, of us console players, you know, what we had before this was like the Super FX games on the Super Nintendo or Virtue Racing on the Sega Genesis. Actually, Virtue Racing... Ah, uh, that might have even come out the same year as this. Was Virtue Racing on Genesis 93 or 94? I can't remember. I want to say it was probably 93. It might have been 94, actually. So, I mean, imagine, like, being a kid like me, having only played, like, Star Fox or Stunt Race FX or something like that, if Stunt Race FX was even out by this point, and then seeing this for the first time, I my mind would have been absolutely blown. Absolutely blown. And, you know, just the fact that it still holds up so well today from a gameplay standpoint uh, is... it's just really awesome. Alright, we got some good speed now. You gotta watch out for those sharp turns, though. Also, it is entirely possible to get some airtime, which is really cool. We'll probably get some airtime on the uh, the Alpine course. All right, we're gonna break a little bit. Yeah, I geared, I shifted down, and it was way too high in the RPMs. I shouldn't have done that. Alright, back up the fifth gear. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, see, that's the invisible wall right there. I hit the invisible wall. And here's my opponent coming up behind. So you definitely want to use your rear view mirror in this game. You know, it's interesting to see some, uh, some performance, like in-game performance techniques, though applied in this game that are still in use today. So, you know, in uh, racing games today, a lot of times the rearview mirrors are at like half the frame rate of what you see in game. Just so the game just uses, it up, uses up less resources. 
And in this game, it's the same way. Your rearview mirror is a lot choppier than uh, your, uh, you know, your main view. And there's a Planet of the Apes reference. <laughs> but we still won that, though, which is pretty cool. And we didn't get a full motion video for that. And we'll go ahead and switch the opponent's car again. We'll give him the uh, the Lamborghini. There we go. All right, and on to Alpine. This is the last one. But uh, I'd say this one's probably a little bit longer than the other ones. I know each course probably takes about at least five minutes each. Some of the other ones will take you like three or four minutes. One thing I want to do is uh, I want to pick up the Need for Speed uh, for MS-DOS and then the Need for Speed SE. Um, and the SE version might even be Windows 95. And uh, I want to try to play them on my old Pentium computer that I have. And kind of see how they compare. Because I know the PlayStation and Saturn versions are, are much more arcade style. They lose that simulation uh, feel. Um, but I want to play the PC versions and see if they're they're more arcadey or if they're they're more simulation like like this game is. It'd be nice being able to play this game at say a higher frame rate, and if the PC versions are kind of faithful to this one in terms of you know the controls and physics and things like that, I think that would be a, a really fun experience to uh, to have. All right, we're gonna downshift again. One of the most satisfying things in this game is driving at a, at a really high speed, not wrecking like I'm doing, <laughs> and just weaving in and out between traffic, oncoming traffic. You know, it's, it's a very satisfying experience, you know, being at close to top speed, going through your turns really quickly, dodging traffic really quickly, and I'm unfortunately not making it look very exciting right now because I just keep slamming into things which slows me down but man once you get coasting in this game it is it is really a uh, really a good feeling now we have to reverse And it's actually kind of interesting, because a lot of these wrecks that I'm having... Oh, look at all the deer. Or the moose. <laughs> uh, a lot of these wrecks I'm having, I'm feeling like I should be able to just, like, skim past the traffic, which I've always done in the past. But, apparently I'm coming way too close to the cars, and it's causing, like, actual crashes. As opposed to just, you know... You know, slight brushes against, uh, you know, the traffic. And that guy actually just ran into me. We got another cop car coming up. Oh, come on. Why are you doing this?
You know, I, I'm a little disappointed that I'm not actually playing a little bit better. I did a practice run before this, and I, I played really well. Uh, and I figured I would just, you know, replicate that in a in the live setting. But uh, it looks like it just wasn't to be, unfortunately. But uh, that's okay. I'm glad I'm able to show off this game, though. Um, and I know a lot of you guys out there that maybe have played this, but haven't put much time into it. Uh, maybe haven't even seen some of these courses because maybe you've played on the novice difficulty mode, which is basically what I did. Um, every time I ever played this game, I just went right into the game, which defaults to novice. I didn't even know there were, uh, you know, third sections to each course up until just a few weeks ago. And there's our checkpoint. So that was actually a pretty bad showing on that, uh, that section. We'll see if the other two are a little bit better. But yeah, the, uh, the third section on this route is actually a snowy course, which is pretty cool. And there's lots of tunnels and lots of, like, really sharp 90-degree turns and stuff like that. So that's, it's really interesting. So the city level is just lots of straightaway for the most part, just some very light turns, you know, long, easy turns. And then uh, the, the coastal route is a little bit of a mixture of lots of straightaway with, you know, more, you know, a greater amount of sharper turns. And then Alpine is just uh, lots of sharp turns, especially these next two courses. Let's see if we can beat this guy this time. Which means we're gonna have to we're gonna have to play better if we're gonna do that. And, and we're not playing better so far. Probably catching up now. So you gotta take it easy. This is definitely one of those games that I will admit could be a little tough to talk and play at the same time because there's a lot that you've gotta kinda have going on in your head. It'd be like, you gotta know to break early, you know. You gotta be able to analyze the traffic. Can I weave past these guys? Do I have to go out onto the uh, the shoulder? Can I go in between these these car patterns, or what? I like going under these bridges too, or I should say, I, I like driving on these bridges. I'm not under a bridge. I'm on the bridge. You can see the shadows in the track. Very cool effect. We're getting really fast now, which means we can get out of control really, really quickly. That was close. Awful. Looks like my opponent was right behind me too. He crashed as well.
So for those of you guys outside of North America watching this and are kind of wondering why uh, cars are driving on both sides of the road, um, the lines in the middle of the road, you'll notice that there's lines with dots in between them. Uh, if you see those, at least I don't know if this is across the entire country, but I know in my area uh, it means you can drive on the opposite side of the road to say pass a vehicle like that truck just passed that SUV. Um, now it's very unrealistic for you know these these dotted lines to appear on windy roads like this. Usually it's on roads with uh, just very long straight sections. Um, if they don't want you to pass. Um, or if passing is not allowed on the road, there's just going to be two solid yellow lines going down the middle of the road. Um, that basically indicates, like right here, two solid yellow lines, see? Now people can't drive on the opposite side of the road. So, you know, there's lots of realism in this game. Uh, lots of little attention to detail to the real world, which, again, like I said, is, is pretty neat. And you'll notice that on those parts with the dotted lines, um traffic will go on the opposite side of the road like right now now they're willing to, to go on the opposite side of the road but when it's a uh, when it's two solid yellow lines you'll notice that the your traffic won't go to the opposite side of the road so look they'll, they'll kind of follow the uh you know the rules of the road you'll follow the law United States law, I should say. Because <laughs> obviously other parts of the world, they have their own driving laws and whatnot. And it's, uh, yeah. All right, this is our last course, guys. Yes, yeah, so we're, we're almost an hour in. We'll probably be about an hour once we're done with this. But this is the, uh, the probably the trickiest, most windy uh, road of uh, the game. It's kind of funny playing a game like this and talking about, like, real-world things in my Let's Play instead of actually talking about, like, gameplay techniques and strategy and things like that. It's definitely... <laughs> definitely a change of pace for me. You know, I play a lot of action games on my channel here. Um, if I do play racing games, usually it's arcade-style stuff. Some futuristic racing games like the F-Zero games and whatnot. So it's kind of fun playing this game, which, you know, is a fairly realistic game. And, you know, I end up talking about more uh, real-world things than actual in-game things. I'm trying to get around this guy, but I'm on this shoulder and it's not working. Oh, jeez. This is an absolutely horrible showing, though. Absolutely horrible showing. I've wrecked on every single course. Either wrecked or just stopped, you know, spun out. So I don't even think I'm going to be able to show you the uh, the winning full motion video once, which is kind of sad. But I guess hey, that's more for you to see for the first time if uh, if you uh, decide to check this game out. If you're someone that's got a 3DO or if you're thinking about getting a 3DO sometime, you can see that for yourself. And you'll see it a lot when you play it on Novice. Novice is much, much easier. Like I said, there's a whole lot less traffic. Uh, I think it's a little bit easier to defeat your opponent as well. my opponent.
just got an extra life. So close to this guy. Oh, come on. It happened again, man. He just went right into my lane. So one strategy to get around these guys is just to, you know, literally go off the track onto the shoulder. But on turns, that's probably not the best idea. It's okay on straightaways, but when you're on turns, it doesn't work nearly as well, unfortunately. He's still up there. Oh, we just got some air time, and that killed me. Ah, come on. I wish there was a way to just restart. I don't think you can. Or if you do, it might just restart, you know, you back at the very, very beginning of the uh, the entire route. Well, we're not going to get first place on this one. That's disappointing. I wasn't expecting to fly into the air like that. But that can happen, you know, at various parts of the game. That's it. That is the need for speed for the 3DO. What a terrible showing. What an absolutely horrific, terrible showing. I apologize for that, guys. But I'm sure most of you guys don't even care. <laughs> I'm just disappointed in myself, because like, I did some practice runs, and you know I streamed it on Twitch a couple weeks ago, and then I did a practice run right before doing this playthrough, and went pretty smoothly. But, uh, yeah, that run right there was just absolutely horrific. Uh, you know, pretty much the entire way. I think there was one course on, like, Coastal where I did just fine, but for the most part, uh, I did a horrible job of, of showing off, like, how to play this game. Uh, and for that, I'm sorry. So, yeah, no ending, uh, you know, no ending full motion video or anything like that, unfortunately, because I didn't get first place on, uh, you know, all three of them, so... Yeah, shame I couldn't show you that, but it's not really a huge deal. Um, one of the things about this game is that... There, there's not a whole lot in terms of, like, unlockables or anything like that. You know, you get the same, um, you know, ending cutscene, you know, on any difficulty mode. And, uh, you know, that's pretty much it. You know, you can change some of these options if you want. You can try to play on, you know, novice or, or intermediate, but... There's not really any point in playing on anything other than Pro. And, uh, it is a little bare bones in terms of, like, extra features. But, uh, other versions of the game, like the PC and the Saturn and PlayStation versions, did add in a bunch of extra courses, um, and things like that. But remember that they're, they're quite different experiences, at least the Saturn and PlayStation ones, because uh, I have played those firsthand. Uh, much more arcade style, 
Uh, there's not as much risk on the track. From what I understand, you don't even have like oncoming traffic and things like that. It's mostly just about racing opponents, driving really fast, and with you know twitchy arcade style uh, gameplay and physics. Whereas this is just like your car feels very grounded. Um, it's it's very realistic. Your 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 car has weight, and uh, you know it, it. The cars feel realistic, which is you know nice for this kind of game. So, uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. I don't really have anything else to talk about. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me on this playthrough if you made it to this point. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, uh, which I don't blame you, give it a thumbs down. Uh, if you're new to my channel, consider subscribing. And to everyone else already sub, thank you as always for your continued support. Um, I'll catch you guys on the next video. And until then, take it easy.